What's up guys, you're Cavalier, AthleteNX.com. So let me ask you a question. Take a look at these three guys and you tell me what makes their midsections so impressive, all right? One by one. First up, martial arts legend, Bruce Lee. Okay, take note, because I'm gonna show you another picture of him again in a second. Next guy, famous boxer, Manny Pacquiao. Again, take a look, remember it. We're gonna look at another picture of him in a second. And of course, my childhood fitness icon, Sylvester Stallone, here. Take another look. Good. Now, I want to show you another picture of each of these guys again. Let's go back to Bruce Lee. What's happened? Can you notice what's not as impressive, what's different? We'll go to the next guy, Manny Pacquiao, once again. Take a look. What do you think? What do you see? And then finally, Sylvester Stallone one more time. The difference, if I put these pictures now side by side, is in one picture, we actually see the development, the true development, of the serratus anterior, a muscle that a lot of us overlook. And in the other picture here, we've taken it away. Now, you don't want to take yours away. You want to make sure you're developing yours as good as possible because you can see that when the serratus anterior is developed, it actually starts the tapering effect down and feeding into the external obliques, then which feeds into the abs. You want to have the best looking midsection is going to rely on this fan-like muscle that comes in here, 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 and it feeds down right out of the lat, down in. And guess what happens? Guess how we activate that muscle the most? We activate that muscle the most from punching because it's the protraction of the arm and getting that shoulder blade around the body to wrap around. So it's not just kind of flipping your arm out like this, but actually getting your arm extended as far out as possible. That gives us the ability to activate that muscle. But you know what? We can actually do that and incorporate that into an entire ab workout. And that's what I wanted to do here for you today. I'm going to give you five exercises that will not only take your arm through that protraction to get the, ma the major activation of that muscle to help develop it, but secondly, incorporate the abs as well so you have one complete workout. Okay, let's kick off this boxer ab workout here with a pretty basic exercise, but we're going to do it differently. And this is a plank but we're going to activate the serratus anterior and we could do it very simply by not just resting passively on our forearms, but raising the bar a little bit and actually pushing through our forearms, right? We're going to try keeping our forearms in contact with the ground to push our body away. And then by doing so, we're getting that protraction and rounding of the shoulder blades around our body, which is key as we talked about to activate the serratus. Now, we're not overlooking the impact that this still can have on the abs. But what's great about this is we get that literal one-two combo of incorporating serratus activity with the traditional rectus abdominis that we get from a plank. Next, we can take one of my favorite ab exercises, which is the ab wheel rollout. You can dust yours off. You can still use this thing, I promise you guys. It's actually still good. But what we do is, once again, we focus on how we're using it. Now, when we do the rollout, a lot of us will just sink down into it and let it collapse on us. No, if you want to activate the serratus as well, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to push that wheel out actively in front of you. So I get up on top of it. You can see me actually initiate first by pushing my arms down and lengthening them as far as I can, and then holding that position, because that's key, being able to hold that position the entire time, then execute your rollout and come back in. Again, there's no differentiation here. We're still working the abs. There's nothing that we're taking away from working the abs. All we're doing is adding to the fact that we've now activated the serratus on top of that. Now, this couldn't be a boxer ab workout without actually throwing a few punches, right? We know that this is one of the best ways to activate this muscle, and we can make it more of a core challenge just by varying the position of our body when we do this. So I've anchored a band behind me. And what I'm focusing on to get the serratus activated is to push my hand out and even further, right? We're reaching as far out and away as possible. So it's not just about getting to here, but it's about getting to there so we can get the shoulder blade wrapping around. But I mentioned the feet. What's going on down there? Well, we're trying to narrow our base of support so that our core has to do more work to stabilize our body, especially as we're moving our arm against the resistance of the band. So you can see I've actually staggered my feet and put them in line with each other. In the back foot, I'm just going up onto a toe. So I'm minimizing my entire base of support and I'm narrowing it at the same time to make it more of a core challenge. But as we talked about, the band and the pushing out in and of itself is going to really hit the serratus as well. 
This next exercise here is actually one of my favorites just overall, and it's a variation of something we call our gymnast abs exercise, and that is getting into a dip bar station here, and then not just worrying about doing dips and not just worrying about doing knee ups, but actually working on pulling our pelvis up into this posterior tilt, which we know is gonna activate the abs. But look what's going on at the same time with my hands. I'm not just pulling up, but at the same time, I'm pushing down on my hands and away as far as I can, really trying to round those shoulder blades and get them around my body to activate the serratus. And we call this a screwdriver. The screwdriver is a great way to incorporate not just the serratus and not just the abs, but also to get the obliques involved as well. Sort of the holy trinity we say of ab training. I actually made a whole video on that if you haven't seen that yet. I'll link that at the end of the video. But in the meantime, it falls in perfectly here as yet another option to really hammer home this serratus. And finally, we have another popular ab exercise, the crunch pull down. And not only do guys tend to do incorrectly, but I think in this case, they're missing out on a great opportunity to include the serratus in this move. And it's just by simply changing the position of the rope in relation to your body when you're doing the exercise. Most of us will take that rope right in front of us and go straight down and crunch. But well, why not turn your body around? If we have the rope anchored behind us and we pull that weight stack and we reach, now we're getting the serratus activated against the resistance here of the stack. And then from there, then we execute the crunch pull down. We're getting the serratus activated the entire time. We're incorporating again the abs through every single exercise here. The rectus abdominis is getting a great workout. We mentioned in the beginning, serratus feeds into the external oblique, which feeds right down into the rectus abdominis. So these muscles prefer to be able to be engaged together. We're gonna allow them to do that here finally for the first time. So there you have it guys, there is your complete workout. Do each of these exercises focus mostly on the quality of every repetition. If you find that you're losing the ability to contract your serratus, slow it down, get a good quality rep, and if you can't get any more, then that's the, the end of that exercise. Take a rest, move on to the next. Try to go through two or three rounds of this if possible. Guys, I'm telling you, if you wanna look like an athlete, you gotta train like an athlete. You can't overlook muscles that matter. The serratus, not only does it look good, and does it help all those guys that I showed you in the beginning to have an entirely impressive core, and even if you're not a fighter, it's going to lead to great benefits in terms of shoulder stability and keeping your shoulder moving right, especially if you move it up over your head. Right? These are all things that matter. We overlook none of it when it comes to our Athlinex training programs. If you're looking for a program that tells you how to do all this step by step, head over to athlinex.com. In the meantime, if you haven't subscribed, guys, make sure you do and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. I told you I'd link one of those videos here at the end of this video here. I'm going to do that for you in just a couple seconds. In the meantime, I'll be back here again in just a couple days. Let me know what else we want me to cover. I'll do my best to do that in the days and weeks ahead. See you soon.